with Daryl Lamont Jenkins, who is uh, in the film Alt-Right, Age of Rage, which is premiering here at uh, South by Southwest. And uh, Daryl, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. And uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should be specific about your role in the film. You are one of the, you are on the uh one of the I'm leaders. Not one of the alt-right. Yes, yes. Well, that's very clear. Yeah. Yes, but like you're you're part of the uh, Antifa right. mov- movement, um, which for people that don't know what that is, could, uh, could you explain that? Antifa. Antifa. That's right. Antifa. 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 And it, because it's short for anti-fascist. Right. And I am the executive director of one of the uh, organizations that a lot of people within those circles know. One People's Project. We started back in 2000, and. You know, we're going to see our 18th anniversary on uh, July 4th, and we're based out of Philadelphia, and our mission in life is to um, make Nazis cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's, I mean, uh, to me, there's nothing more pleasurable than, uh, you know, going on the internet mm-hmm. and seeing someone punch a Nazi. Like, why is that, like, I mean, I, I, I personally find that entertaining uh, to uh, because the group, um, obviously, they're violent fascist and irritating and having grown up I grew up in Detroit Michigan right. kind of an old school punk guy which I think you might be very much so <laughs> yeah yeah I got that I got that from the doc there's a little a little bit about like your early punk rock roots yeah I mean I come out I mean I, I've been in the punk scene since 90 and I, I kind of like fluttered out around the time that one people's project started but you know it was the punk scene that really Ginned up a lot of the anti-fascism among um, in, among the circles that I'm in today. So I mean, it's straight out of the punk scene. When you think about the fact that um, certain organizations, certain people would just um, like uh, skinheads against racial prejudice and um, FSU, Friends Stand United, uh, would basically make it their mission in life to chase neo Nazis out of the shows. Then yeah, that was that was what we were trying to do to preserve that culture, preserve um, the punk scene for everybody, which it was supposed to be. You were supposed to be come as you are when it comes to punk. And here comes these knuckleheads that says, "No, you come as we are." And we said, "No, you can leave." So I had that attitude, <laughs> and that's where this all comes from. Well, it's weird because I've always had like at least growing up punk like um, in Detroit. It's like to me just uh, tolerance. Everyone was like, "Hey, everyone, like whatever. Let your freak flag fly. You dress like this. You dress like that. No one's going to criticize you for what color your hair is or whatever." But it was always the people that always ruined the party were these Nazi punks, these skinheads that I just boneheads, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and because you know. You know if you're from the scene, you know um, a lot of people don't even like to um, consider them to be skins because skinheads, um, skinhead culture is, is emulated from those um, mods back. It comes from the mod movement. It comes from when the uh, Jamaican root boys came out to England to find work, and the mods got into that, got into their look, got into their style, and started emulating that, and that's where it comes from. When the British, um, when the British white supremacists, what is it, the National Front? Mm-hmm. Um, wanted to try to make inroads within the youth, they co-opted, they tried to co-opt punk, and by and the way they could do that, as far as they were concerned, was become a deal with the skinhead culture because the skinhead culture was kind of like a a pro um a pro kind of thing, a pro culture. And it was clean cut. Um you look good when you're a skin. So that was what they gravitated towards. And that's why by the time uh, the skinhead culture came out here to America back in 1986. All we saw were Nazis. So skinheads against racial prejudice came about, and tried to say no that they're basically screwing up what it is that um, skinhead culture is about. And that's always been I, I refuse to accept them as being skins. Period. Well, I, I mean, this is this is good. This is good background for you know what the documentary deals with because the documentary follows uh, some of these uh, some of the speakers within the alt right, mm-hmm. which is I, I don't know. They're trying to rebrand fascism in a way that is palatable uh, in, in a mainstream way that it can actually be spoken about and uh, un, uh, unfortunately legitimized, but. The documentary follows um, some of these speakers in the alt-right. Um, it also follows yourself up 
through the uh, the tragedy in Charlottesville that happened last summer that um, I don't think I mean I'm sure that the documentary filmmakers uh, 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 the, the director um, is Adam Lowe right? Adam Lowe, Adam Lowe. He's, he's not here uh, to speak about but I mean how could he have known that this was going to lead to such a national event because it was it, it turned into of course with Trump's uh, sort of middling uh, dog whistle response he didn't to- know he didn't know. It's funny because it's like um, they was bi- we were doing the documentary when all of this is going mm-hmm. on, of course, and it was about the, supposed to be about Trump's first year, uh, and it morphed into what we are going to see tonight. Mm-hmm. And the thing about Charlottesville it was so it was so crazy because they was asking me what kinds of events are coming up that we can prop- that you think we will probably go to. I said everybody's mobilizing for Charlottesville. On, on August 12th, you should come out. And I also told them to go to the American Renaissance Conference, which was two weeks prior, where you hear Richard Spencer tell everybody to come out to Charlottesville. We expect it to be traumatic for the liberals of Charlottesville. And it was only by happenstance, only because I, I said, yo, come down. You don't want to miss this, that they were there. And I'm glad they were there because... And I'm glad everybody was there because now everyone in the country around the world were able to, was able to see what exactly it is I have been seeing over the past 20, 30 years. And what my organization and what other anti-fascists out there have been sounding the alarm against for those past 20, 30 years. Now we have to do something about it. And the thing about this documentary is that it kind of gives people a little bit of a blueprint. It helps people to understand who it is um, on each side and how to be on the right one. <laughs> well, this is this is what I like about your approach um, with dealing with the alt right is there's uh, there's a morality, there's a way that you deal with it. There's also oddly, I feel uh, I got the sense from you. There's a sense of humor in dealing with these uh, w- with this group. So, can you talk about what some of the techniques that you've used? Like, I feel like you're you're going about it in a in a way that's kind of a model that that other people could follow. So, would you mind uh, detailing some of those? Efforts? The thing is, I mean, it's kind of like what Doctor Who does. I mean, I don't know if you're a Doctor Who fan or anything like that. Dude, we're nerds of a, <laughs> like, yeah. There are nerds that don't know Doctor Who. Right? <laughs> but the thing, I mean, the go, the, if I'm going to bring up Doctor Who, I'll bring up David Tennant's Doctor Who because he was really good with this one. Uh, the best doctor, let's yeah. be honest. Number 10. <laughs> and <laughs> the thing is, he would crack jokes. He would be, he would be funny, but he was dead serious. Mm-hmm. And when it was time to kick you behind, he would, he would, mm-hmm. he must. And, and that's the way I approach it, even though I, I, I was doing this before I even started watching Doctor Who. It was kind of like, look, these guys are corny, yes, but they are dangerous. The issue is, how do I convey both at all at once? Levity. <laughs> and, and the thing also is this, too. When you see an Ann Coulter or a Pam Geller or, or you know, any of those radio talk show hosts out there um, doing their thing, they always try to basically suck up all the air out of the room. They always try to make themselves the spectacle. So my mission in life whenever I was dealing with these characters is to upstage them. So that's where all of that came from. It's not like... Um, it's not like I'm not taking them seriously. I'm not saying that you should um, engage in anything, uh, engage in it all funny and um, and not um, be prepared to throw down if you have to. But it's just simply a case of um, just not just basically. How should I say? Taking the piss out of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's but I hope I can use that word, but, <laughs> well, but well, that is what it is. <laughs> well, Daryl, I did not think when we were going to uh, sit here together and talk about a documentary about the alt right that we'd be talking about uh, Doctor Who. Wait, I'm glad we have because, and I've argued this with people before, is that Doctor Who, the example that Doctor Who gives is this is how to solve a problem by using your wits, using mm-hmm. your mind, using by thinking through a problem rather than uh, using any type of violence. If you look at, if you study Doctor Who, and all, he's always battling some sort of group that's uh, trying to take over and finds a way to stop them through thinking through it. But let's be fair if we're going to use Doctor Who as an analogy. Okay, oh no. Okay. Because the Doctor also had a habit 
of while he would not engage in violence so much, while he would not carry a gun, right. everybody around him, he would kind of persuade to do that for him. Uh, I guess you're right. For him. <laughs> and, and, and I don't want and I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to do that for anybody else, but we have to recognize Antifa really does try to go about things the right way. We are not always dressed in black and, uh, and ready to smack somebody across the face all the time at a rally. Our mission has always been people got to know what's going on and people have got to be proactive against it. And that is period, paragraph, the end, what Antifa is all about. Well, can you uh, can you uh, tell me uh, like some of the techniques that you've used? Because I know that like some of the signs are very like taking the piss out of them is is the the general strategy. But what are some of the specific things that uh, you and and your group did that to uh, to call to light? Well, what morons these guys are. Well, basically, journalism is my vocation. So I have to, one thing, I had to detach myself from the activist scene for a little bit. Because if you get caught up in too much activism, that means you can also get caught up in too much propaganda. Mm-hmm. And you will, start being, you will start trying to create a narrative around your beliefs, regardless of what's true out there. Excuse me. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that everybody had the facts, the who, what, when, where, why, just like if I was a reporter that was unbiased. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing. Go out there and tell the truth about what's going on to tell people what's going on, because (laughs) that's something that I always really just drove me up the wall, how people would avoid this issue like the plague. And a lot of these suckers that just go on through. And, and, and I will tell you, I mean, I use something as an example um, that happened a couple of years ago. There was um, one particular white supremacist, um, half Korean, half Jewish, by the way. Mm-hmm. Do not ask, ask me <laughs> how that happened. But he, uh, he attacked a black woman. He, was, he attacked a black woman in the street calling her the N-word. He was in a drunken stupor. And this was in Washington, D.C. So he got tackled by an off-duty Secret Service agent. And... Uh, He was one of Pat Buchanan's executive directors. Um, He also worked with um, former Congressman Tom Ted Crater with one of his PACs. And we found out about this incident just by accident a couple of years later. Because no one was reporting on this. No one did. the. No one saw it on the Internet. So there must not have been a story. Um, But we found we found something a little something about how he was. Um, going to court for something, so we decided to check it out, and we had to do the legwork. That's how we found out the story. We wrote the story. We put the um, the the, um, the documents from the case online, and it went from us to indie, DC Indie Media to Little Green Footballs to the Young Turks to Rachel Maddow, <laughs> <laughs> and it got him. It, he was going. He was trying to get into the uni- um, University of Virginia School of Law. He didn't get in after that. Unfortunately, he's an attorney now, but uh, but we definitely did some damage to him. Um, I, I have a couple. That's how it works. <laughs> I have a couple final questions. Um, my first, what, what do you hope people get out of this documentary? I, I feel if I feel almost the entire nation is aware of the events in Charlottesville last summer. This is an expansion upon that. But what do you want people to get to get out of this movie? That we're not broken. That we are winning. Um, that this is still our society and most importantly we can write this ship and also just from one nerd to another okay i grew up watching star trek like in the 70s okay and i thought i thought star trek was so ahead of its time and this is great we're all working together i would have thought that at the age i'm at now we'd have, we'd have be done with all this stuff you know what I mean? Like, why are we still having this conversation? Is there something in our in certain people's lizard brains that don't allow them to get past certain things? I, I guess this is just something I've just having grown up in Detroit in a, a family that is not all white, like just like and, 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 you know, as your family is as well. Like, like, why are we still dealing with this now? Like, we're living in the future, like that we're going to Mars and doing shit. Why are we so fucking stupid? Well, about this shit. Continue, well, let's continue the nerd dynamic that we are invo- engaged in now okay, and okay. bring up Yoda, okay. who said that, you know, 
When we don't understand something, we fear it. And as we fear turns to anger, anger turns to hate. That's where it comes from. We got to understand who we are. And when we don't understand, this is what happens. We basically have to get a handle on everyone's fears. And that is not hard. All we got to do is just allow everybody to express themselves um, and not just the assholes. <laughs> and we'll and we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Well, I, I appreciate that. I really I, I am hopeful for the future. I just thought, wow, the future is taking a really long time. This is the, that's uh, that <laughs> that's all I have to say on that. But I understand that. <laughs> I always say I want to live forever just to see how all this mess turns out. Seriously. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, uh, Daryl Lamont Jenkins, uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Where, where can people find you if they want to read your blog or read all your stuff? Like, OK, we have um, well, one people's project dot com. You can go to. We also have a, um, our news line is IDAVOX, I-D-A-V-O-X dot com. Mm-hmm. It's named after Ida B. Wells, um, who was pretty much doing the same kind of work we're doing today. And uh, you can always find me on Twitter, D. Lamont Jenkins. And also on Instagram is D. Lamont Jenkins. And I'm all over the Internet anyway, so you'll find me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, for, uh, ha- thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank great. You thank you. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. All right. That was great.